Today, Mars is very cold and very dry, but was it always that way? What about billions of years ago? A new study was just published in GSA's journal Geology called Topography and Mineralogy of Clay Deposits Signify an Epoch of Warm and Humid Climate on Early Mars. So not cold, not dry, but warm and humid Mars? And yes, you heard that title right. They used mud, clay deposits, to reconstruct climate on Mars. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about this paper and their new findings. But before we get into the details, why is this important? Why should we care? Well, we know that today Mars is basically a frozen desert. It's dry, it's dusty, and if you set foot there without a spacesuit, well, let's just say it won't end well. But scientists have long debated whether ancient Mars was any different. Determining the ancient climate and environmental conditions of early Mars not only helps us better understand the early history of our solar system, but also the potential for life on Mars, or at least life at one point on Mars. If ancient Mars was warm and humid with liquid water at its surface, there's a much greater possibility that it once had life, and therefore a greater possibility that we could find life on Mars today, whether it still be living or ancient fossils. To find life still around on Mars at this point is probably just a search for microbial organisms rather than anything macro in size. But even microbial life would be an incredible find on any planet other than Earth, whether it be living or in a fossil. But this isn't the first study to suggest warmer, wetter climates on early Mars. So what makes this study and their findings significant? While there is plenty of evidence that water once flowed across the surface of Mars, including river valleys, lake beds, and even possible shorelines, most climate models struggle to explain how Mars could have been warm enough to sustain liquid water at its surface. This is where clay minerals come in. Clay minerals form when water interacts with rock over long periods of time, which makes it a great time capsule for past environments. And the specific clay minerals present in any given deposit tell us a lot about the conditions in which they formed. And that's what this study attempts to use to reconstruct climate and environmental conditions on Mars. Specifically, the authors of this new study investigated the thickness and topography of these clay deposits across 46 different sites on Mars. They also looked at the mineral compositions at 14 key locations using an imaging spectrometer on the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter to analyze the types of clays present at those locations. And finally, they mapped out how these layers draped over the Martian landscape to see how they fit a specific environmental formation model. In other words, to determine whether these clays formed in place due to chemical weathering, or if they were instead deposited by water in lakes or oceans. So what they find, well, first, the average total thickness of the clay layers they measured was a whopping 59 meters, or 194 feet. That's thicker than many places on Earth. Some locations even reached up to 200 meters, or 656 feet. These thicknesses suggest a level of weathering that would typically require a long period of warm and humid conditions. Second, in all of the sites studied, aluminum-rich clays like kaolinite and montmorillonite sat on top of iron and magnesium-rich smectites. This is a pattern we see in highly weathered tropical soils on Earth. And lastly, these clay layers followed the contour lines of the land, suggesting that they formed in place due to weathering rather than deposition in lakes or oceans. So what does all this mean? Well, it strongly suggests that these deposits did not form in the cold, icy Mars we know today, but instead that Mars likely went through long, warm and humid intervals enough for intense chemical weathering to occur, similar to what we see in the tropics of Earth today. These findings add to the growing evidence that early Mars was actually capable of supporting liquid water at its surface for long timescales, not just short stints. And this is important because the longer the time periods of stable, habitable conditions on Mars, 
the more likely it is that life was able to establish itself and get started on that planet. But exactly how long these warm, wet periods lasted and how often they occurred remains uncertain. But never fear, future research, including upcoming missions and rover studies, will help us figure this out. Anyway, that's all I got for this video about this particular paper, which will be linked down in the description box below, as will other references and helpful resources. So be sure to check that out. And with that, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.